in the online classroom, it's it's very important to keep students engaged as much as possible. And as we mentioned earlier, the flipped classroom uh, model works very well for us because we can leave the part that students are doing something silently, like watching a uh, learning uh, grammar or doing reading and writing, um, leave that outside of classroom so that we can utilize the, 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 the live session and they have lots of interaction. One way to keep students engaged to have constant interaction. And um, I mentioned some examples earlier, create information gap, do not share one visual aid for one student to the whole class. So other class may have to pay attention to what he or, he, he or she is saying. And use authentic materials also um, exciting for, for students. They, they, all my students are very excited of using the map of subway, map of, of Beijing. Um, and you know, like, our school policy is that students always have to show their face. So some of the schools you are working for may not um, may not be like it's not mandatory for students to show their to show their face. But if you really do have a lot of silent time on the student side and you're talking to them, we're just a talking head. We have no idea what they're doing on there, and sometimes you just see a mysterious smile on their face and you know you're not talking about something funny. So engaging them is, is very important. Um, make your class challenging. Um, so you can see the chart on the right side, where there's a zone that you, we're, we're constantly adjusting our curriculum to. If we find this is too easy for students, they're not paying attention, then we adjust it. If it's too uh, difficult, then the causing anxiety, we'll, we'll adjust it. So we'll, we'll, we'll have feedback or several from students towards the end of semester. But later, Andrea will also mention, you can always communicate with your students, give feedback from them and to, to, to um, so that your curriculum is at the right level for them. Um, make your class challenging, make your class engaging, uh, make your class fun. So ask content questions, use authentic materials and other examples, Andrea. Oh, sorry, didn't mean mm -hmm. to go to the yeah. next slide. Yeah, so uh, to keep that class uh, interactive, we also have uh, pen pal letters. Uh, Yinjin and I uh, have partnered with different schools where the students can um, actually put in practice what they learn in a real communication by writing letters with students that are also learning, but learning English as a second language. And they can also compare um, that they are also struggling and learning and they might make mistakes, but they are trying their best. So create that empathy too in the classroom. Another thing uh, to have that class interaction uh, is a class playlist. I do that in my classes at the beginning of the class. I play a song. Each student has to send me throughout the year uh, their favorite songs. It could be in Spanish, English, any language. The idea is just to um, start the class with a good uh, mood and you might see sometimes the student hears that song that maybe is their song and they start dancing a little bit in their chair and that's nice. So it creates a nice mood for the class. Um, games. So the games, not only the games that you present, but also allow students uh, to create games. That's a good suggestion. Uh, students are very creative and sometimes they come up with these great games. Um, and also you can assess their oral performance because they are given instructions and they are acting as moderators um, to deliver that game. Um, one of the questions I just saw in the, in the chat for games or any activities, information gap activities, use team as a way to submit maybe an instruction or a portion of that activity that another student may need uh, to um, take that act to perform that activity in the online classroom. So that's how we use teams to submit maybe something uh, for the other student. Um, regarding resources, like we mentioned, we know that there are great resources out there like Quizlet, Kahoot, Edpuzzle, uh, Pinterest for you teachers, paid teachers, there's tons of stuff. Uh, use what is out there, but sometimes you want to create your own thing or uh, change a little bit what you saw out there, uh, you can do that. Um, I like to use uh, the student skills. I like to ask the students what they like to do, what are their, what are their hobbies. Maybe they like to paint, uh, listen, um, sing or play an instrument. And for example, I had an activity at the end of the year um, 
for my intermediate Spanish class where the students had to write a reflection and then I told them to put that reflection in a different format, maybe a piece of art, a poem. Actually, a student wrote a poem, another student wrote a song, and there you have some oral performance too. Um, culture, we know that uh, the students are not only learning vocabulary and grammar, but they are also learning culture. Uh, this allows for culture sensitivity and understand from each other. So using authentic resources are really good thing to do. Um, I have used, um, I have asked the students to look for news, for good news. We were studying about um, a country, I think it was Colombia, that they had a special newscast with good news. So I said, well, let's look for good news. We want to hear some good news and share that news in Teams. And then when we meet in the online classroom, we can talk about the news and see what you thought about that. Again, oral performance and oral assessment. And finally, we have the guest speakers. So online classroom allows us to interact with speakers from different countries. So we may not be able um, in the in-person classroom to have someone from another country, but in the online classroom, just send a link to from a Zoom link to uh, the guest speaker and you don't have to worry about budget for hotel, meals, transportations. They are there with you and uh, that's that's a really good resource. So in the next slide I would like to um, share with you that we want to create an online learning community and that community and collaboration has to come also from the feedback. Communicate with your, your students. Ask students what things they like, what the activities they are working, what activities that maybe they are not a huge fan, um, and get that feedback from them. You don't have to wait until the end of the semester, the end of the year, to get all that feedback. So I am constantly asking them. I have even weekly reflections when students uh, have some open-ended questions and they can share uh, their process, their learning process, things they like, things they didn't like. Um, ask them to meet with you during office hours if they have any questions. Get their ideas, get their feedback and learn from your students. So it's like a two-way communication and create this uh, collaboration when the students can learn from each other and you learn from them. <laughs> 